Hello, welcome to the Friday, April 9th, 2021 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Wouldn't it be nice to look over an attacker's shoulder as they are developing a malware to be used against you? Xavier sort of ran into a case where he found on a virus total what looked like a proof of concept piece of software. It definitely wasn't quite done yet, but shows some of the interesting tricks that the attacker is planning to play here. So first of all, uh, this looks overall like a ransomware. However, it does really just zip the files in the current version. It does use a command control channel over Tor and is entirely written in PowerShell. Of course, the simplicity of the code also means that a detection by anti-malware engine at this point is really non-existent in some ways. It reminds me a little bit of sort of that living off the land approach. Also, the Tor client is not included in the malware. That would be something that would need to be installed separately. And the use of 7-zip, well, while not as fancy and strong as what some other ransomware is doing, it may be intended to sort of fly under the radar of tools that look for the excessive use of encryption libraries by using a common tool, again, that living off the land approach. And talking about evading various signatures, Trustwave's Spider Lab uh, came across some interesting phishing email that sort of takes the idea of just delivering a bunch of HTML uh, to the next level by splitting up that HTML into different blocks and hosting it on yourjavascript.com. Yourjavascript.com is not a malicious site. It's a site to host JavaScript code for free and well, like any free file hosting service, this service now also has been abused to host phishing pages. But what's sort of different here is that the phishing page isn't a sort of host in its entirety. Instead, it's split up into little snippets and then assembled to create the actual phishing page. So the trick here is that none of these snippets really has enough content to trigger any signatures. And once they're assembled, well, then it's too late. Then the user sees the phishing page and may be tricked into submitting their data. And security company in teaser came up with yet another approach escalation vulnerability in Azure Functions. Azure Functions is Azure's serverless product. Now, when we say serverless, really that means the developer doesn't have to care about any servers, but of course there is still a server that the code runs on. In this case, it's actually running inside a Docker container. And the problem with Azure was that the permission of the device files inside the Docker container were sufficiently weak to allow code, meaning the function that the user uploaded, to interact with these devices, to directly interact with the file system and read and write arbitrary files, which then of course can be used to further escalate privileges. Lucky for Microsoft, they're actually using a second virtualization layer in addition to running the code inside a Docker container. The Docker container is a Hyper-V guest. So according to Microsoft's assessment of this vulnerability, user data was not at risk here. And yesterday I mentioned the Cisco vulnerability in the Cisco SD when we manage a software. However, there was another vulnerability that I didn't mention, I overlooked, and that affects these RV 110, 130, and 215 devices. These are these sort of small home and small business routers. They have had a real bad sort of history of of vulnerabilities. I believe uh, these are products that Cisco actually inherited from other manufacturers uh, that they purchased over the years. So double check if you're still running one of these devices that you are running the latest firmware. 
And finally, we got uh, yet another port that uh, Google Chrome will no longer use, uh, 100,080. This is yet another port blocked in response uh, to slipstreaming vulnerabilities. Any port that's essentially used by an application layer gateway, so any port that's used by common applications could potentially be abused. The application that is used on port 100,080 is Amanda, the good old Unix backup software. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday.